All right, guys, welcome back for another episode of the Crappie Connection. You sit back, turn your earbuds up, get ready for a long one because we got Mr. Crappie here. I'm Justin Berry. Brad Chapel. Man, just get ready. Mr. Crappie, welcome. Hey, man, I'm, you know, I'm just sitting here in this cabin on Lake Washington and just looking out here, and it's just so beautiful and quiet. And, you know, the wind's blowing a little bit hard today, but. I want to be out there so bad I can't see straight. But, you know, this is just a beautiful place to have this podcast. It's unbelievable. And I appreciate the invite to come. And, and um, hey, man, good little trip over here and from Texas. And yeah. Come down here in south. This is not south Mississippi. It's kind of mid-state, It's right? kind of a northwest. I, I guess that's what Oh, is that right? Right, yeah. 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 Delta. yeah. Mississippi goes all the way to the yeah. ocean, you know. I don't that's like right. them ocean fish, but, you know. Well, give everybody kind of a rundown what we're going to do we got uh, we're going to talk about everything from how he got started in crappie world uh we're going to showcase a few products got tons of questions from the viewers for you and then even talk about the invitational so uh let's get started uh, let's go and get the showcase or whatever you got on the table to get to talk about here hey man we just uh you know over the years the last um 25 years you know i've been able to design products uh not necessarily under the mr crappie brand but it started under the wally marshall brands of stuff we've got uh both these days uh with several different companies but one of the new products that i've got coming out with bullet weight companies next year i'm so excited about because there's so many people that troll for crappie or they want to uh, add another hook. They want to put another hook on their line without having to re-rig. Nobody likes tying a bunch of knots, you know, because no, no. it takes about seven minutes or six minutes or whatever, you know, when you're in the motel room before a tournament and you're tying up rigs. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just so much going on and everything. And so, actually, I came up with a uh, product called the Add a Hook. Yeah, that's it's a- new for 2019. Uh, don't go out there looking for it right now, but it's coming down the pike. We're still uh, uh, getting ready to bring it to market in uh, January, February of 19. So I don't know when this is going to air, but I want to show you guys how this works. When you can tie it, like I said, it takes six minutes to tie a rig. I can do two out of hooks and a weight in 30 seconds. You got that time down good, don't yeah. you? <laughs> it, it's unreal. That, that yeah. little clip but, is just amazing. But anyway, um, it's a stainless steel wire, and it's got two clips on each end. Then in the middle, it has a place for an eyelet to where you can put a snailed hook on there if you want to fish for live bait, or you can put a split ring on there and then put a crappie jig or whatever you want to put on there. Hmm. But actually... Actually, I'm using 50-pound braid just to demonstrate here right. to show the amount of line that you can use. And so you're going to hold it parallel with the uh, fishing line, and you just wrap it around there about four times, and then just pull it up into that clip like that, then come over on the other side and wrap it around there about four times and pull it up in that clip. And it's right there in the middle, and it will not slide either way. Mm-hmm. I mean, just it's so strong that I think that for guides, for people that, hey, when you're in a crappie tournament, time's money. Time is money. You know, time's money. You you know, you don't want to be messing around back there tying rigs while your partner's sitting up on the front of the boat. Can't catch them out of the water. (laughs) Exactly. If you ain't got your pole in the water, you can't catch them. So uh, the Atta Hook is going to be uh, uh, produced by Bullet Weight Company out of Nebraska. Uh, Joe Crumrine and that bunch up there, they do a great job at Bullet Weights. Uh, matter of fact, we have some double swivel weights uh, we're going to call power trollers coming out this year also mm. uh, with the add a hook. And we'll go from the add a hook to add a weight. That's awesome. <laughs> so we're going to do add a weights after this right here. So these are going to come about 8 to 10 to a pack for like three ninety nine. Now, have you done any pound testing on it? Like, have you put it to the test? Man, I had a 50-pound test on here, and I put a 10-pound weight, and I tried to break it. On both ways. On both both ways. Going both ways. I tried to break it with a 10-pound, just taking it and doing it like that. You know, just I had gloves on, and I was trying to – what it did, it actually – it bent the staging just a little bit, but it did not break the Mm -hmm. line. That's awesome. And so I'm I'm just saying that in in when you're tying rigs, you know, you have a problem of trying to figure out how much space you're going to need for your knots and everything. 
you just put this right on there exactly where you want it and it's a done deal so okay. like i can come up the line here and put another one on and it's exactly 15 inches from the other one or if you're wanting to go three foot yeah i mean you can put it right on the money the one thing i really love about that little dude is that you can adjust it if you're starting out and you're right. wanting to find the water column that those fish are suspended at and you've got them spread out say four foot apart well you're really getting all your bites at yeah. 10 foot deep well you can shorten them up to have them a foot apart so that's the adjustment on the water that's going to be astounding for me right yeah. because you're not having to cut your line off right. cut your whole rig off and retie to match what you're trying to fish i'll definitely be getting that in my boat <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah the add a hook man I, I tell people you know the the reason I didn't invent the paper clip is because I was working on the out of hook. <laughs> <laughs> right. You did a good job. I yeah. love it. Well, I I'll tell you what, this is, I'm really excited about this product, and I know the crappie anglers, and even cat fishermen, other people that, like, you know, you take a six-year-old kid that loves to fish. Yeah. Or a young kid, and he's like, look, Mom, and there's no knots. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't stress your line. Mm -hmm. it don't you know, it don't it, stress your line stress yeah it doesn't stress your line like a knot mm -hmm. you know because when you're tying knots you might have a burn mark or you might stretch it a little bit too much and uh by using this you can put it on or take it off the same way that's awesome you know you just untake it off of there if you Even, don't need it you know another thing i think is real cool about that say if you've got your hooks you can take your hooks off for transport yeah yes and keep your yes. pole tangles on you know to a manageable level hey if you're in a tournament you don't want nobody else seeing what you're using yeah. man. you can yeah. just take them <laughs> off in seconds and you're still rigged ready to go that's an awesome point right there yeah awesome yeah. point and we're going to find out you know it's just like having a new product what people go and try and trial and error and they're going to say man i use this in salt water i use mm -hmm. this in whatever and we'll learn as we go along at bullet weights uh, we've already been requested to do a saltwater version a little bit bigger uh, for chicken rigs and uh, pompano rigs. And it's, it's not in the crappie world, yeah. and I don't even yeah. know what they're talking about. But <laughs> yeah. I know that we're going to have to have bigger ones uh, for the saltwater. But, you know, being stainless steel, it ain't never going to rust, and it's not, it's always going to be there. And, That's awesome. And as uh, long as you uh, don't hang up and lose your whole rig, I mean, you know, you're you're – but when you do get hung up and – in 30 seconds you can be back in the water yeah that's amazing yeah that's so, amazing but uh yeah i named it the add a hook and it's a trademarked uh deal and hey man we're just rolling with it and excited about it because it's just something that's gonna help the weekend angler because he don't have to tie knots the tournament fisherman when time is money yes. you know in a guide especially on a guide trip man you know i used to guide and you know, I bet I've tied more knots than, <laughs> man, Ray Roberts mm -hmm. was green timber when we first got started, and that green timber will grab them hooks and grab that fishing line and break you I off. No and so, but, uh, yeah, the add a hook is going to be a... Uh, you say spring of 2019 when people can yeah, really look for it. Yeah, believe. yeah, January, February, uh, this is going to be on the market. Be looking on MrCroppy.com. Is that where it's going to be there first? It's going to be there first on MrCroppy.com, and, and then we'll start getting it out into stores and stuff like that. So I'll keep everybody abreast on what's yeah, going on. I'll be waiting on that. I'll be texting you. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, we're going to send a bunch out, and we're going to have guys testing them all over the country and, and uh, getting them in the guys' hands, the pro anglers and weekend fishermen, too, yeah. that l love to crappie fish. So That's awesome. That's awesome. Cool yeah. little product for crappie fishing, for sure. Yeah. Hey, well, I appreciate that, guys, man. It's just been, you know, having the opportunity over the last, like I said, 25 years to work with major manufacturers in the industry to come out with a, a co-branded product, which is Mr. Crappie or Wally Marshall mm -hmm. items in, in – uh, and I listen to the guys out there in the crappie world. I listen to what they have to say. That's good. That's what it takes. I, I, oh, yeah, because, you know, what do y'all do in Mississippi to what we do in Texas may be just a little bit different deal, you know? Yeah. And so in certain areas, you know, and a lot of products are just regional products that they're used in certain areas, but then also it can branch out. And so 
I listen to the everyday crappie angler and I watch a lot of sites out there. They might not know I'm on there, but I mm-hmm. watch a lot of stuff and see what people are doing. And, That's great. And, and guys always say, man, I'd like to send you some jigs. I'd like to, yeah, I take them, you know, and I look at their yep. stuff and what people are yep. doing. And, That's awesome. And uh, people are, a lo- the one thing about crappie fishermen, they're innovative. You know, they, they like to do their own deal. They like to do yes. their own stuff and design stuff and make their own baits. I think that's cool, man. I just, yeah. you know. it. That's the thing about this sport. It, you can just do any kind of style, you know, anything from the add a hook to the jig body styles, the jig heads. It's just endless the different ways we can go about it. And, and of course, the crappie market is so untapped, really. You know, it's just there's so much explosion here. There's so much excitement and upside to new products uh, in the marketplace. And I know it gets tougher uh, throughout the, you know, uh, as time goes on. Uh, you know, you got your Bass Pro Shops, you got your Cabela's, mm-hmm. you got all the people out there that, and everybody's trying to get shelf space. And I know that has nothing to do with our show today but just letting people yeah. know it's just not that easy right to bring a new we product. was talking about that earlier yeah to bring it to bring a uh, a product to the marketplace yeah because there's only so much room in those stores there's so much that, demand and then there's so much demand for what's in there then somebody else comes up with a product like the add a hook and it's like a no-brainer but you still have to fight for yeah. the shelf space. You know what I'm saying? Even the word. Getting the word out on these new products is so crucial for even the people to learn how to use them. Hey, when you guys called me and said, hey, would you like to come and be on the Crop Connection, man? I was so pumped up, man. I was mm-hmm. like, man, I got to do this. Heck because, yeah. Because, you know, they have a lot of podcasts out there and bass fishing uh, all over the United States. and. And y'all being first to market on this deal, I'm telling that's you. That's right. Man. Hey, first to market, man, that's the deal. That's just like on lures, you know, being first to market. You're the guy and you got it. You know, you ain't first, you last. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, our intention is just like you. And, you know, definitely we appreciate you coming on here. And I know our viewers think the same way as far as you coming on the show and different guests that we're going to have in, in the future coming on. But, you know, we're wanting to really showcase crappie fishing in general. We're wanting to show these new products for people who can go out there and say, man, I needed that. I, yeah. I can't wait to find that and use that. So this is what it is. And, man, just, again. Oh, I, I appreciate it. And, and I made a mistake the other day and put it online, and everybody's just like, where can I get this yeah. now? Well, yeah. I mean, the you know, hook, and, yeah. yeah, the add a hook. And I was like, well, I, may, I might not should have. We're done excited that. about it. Why yeah. not put it out yeah, there? Exactly. But you're gonna uh, have everybody sitting there waiting on the internet, just sitting there waiting to click it, put it in their cart, and order it. And uh, I thought it was pretty cool a while ago talking about another product. Uh, you were looking at these new jig heads, yeah. uh, the sausage head, and it's been out a couple of years now. So I didn't even know that. And uh, I didn't pay attention. Uh, we make it in a sixteenth and an eighth ounce. Um, we looked at doing some quarters, but you know the marketplace is just. You got to look where the wheelhouse is uh-huh. when you're in business, uh-huh. and and 16th and 8th are the most sold out there, and some 30 seconds, but you can't make this bait in a 30 second right. the way it's designed. Uh, actually, it's got like a bar head on it. Looks like a a, um, a deal of sausage. You know what I'm saying? It looks like a kind of looks like a hammerhead shark. To me. <laughs> yeah, it does, but, don't it? Exactly but, what it looks like. But uh, you know, here here's the key about it. I'm not saying that you won't get hung up with it, which you will. But here's the deal. When you're casting and retrieving, if the limb hits one side of the head, it kicks the hook away from the brush. There you go. You see what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, it kicks it to the opposite side, depending on, because it'll go either side like that. But, you know, a lot of people say, well, why the bar head on there? Well, when you catch a crappie on this, instead of being round ball, round ball rolls correct mm-hmm. and so you catch a lot of crappie in the side of the mouth you catch them in the bottom of the mouth just depending on how that jig head rolls but when you set the hook with this when it goes up against the roof of the mouth right there it goes flush it won't turn it won't turn because it's got that bar on there and also when i shoot docks i use the 16th ounce and it i can hold it in my fingers perfect really yeah the bar instead of being round ball it just fits in between your fingers, yeah. And you don't really have to grip it; you just grip the line, mm-hmm. and it just 
just shoot it right in there. But uh, like I said, the sausage head also has the barbs, <coughs> excuse me, on the side here to where they're coming out on the side. And when you push that bait up in there, it's hard to get it off of there. Mm -hmm. And when the crappie bites it, it doesn't tear your lure up because the barb is what tears your baits up. Correct. Yeah, you know, me being in the bait business, I want to see you tear up a bunch of them. <laughs> right, right. You know, I want to see you lose a lot, you know. Yeah. But when he bites down on the plastic, it, it your plastics just last longer uh, by using the sausage head right there. A lot of thought and a simple idea right there. I think so when you shot docks with it. What did you tell me again where you, you held that at, the jig itself? Well, you just, you just hold the jig like between your thumb and index finger, see, like this. This is an eighth. You don't use eighth shooting docks. Right. You use sixteenths. But anyway, you just hold it in between your fingers, and the hook always sticks out like this. Mm -hmm. And you get these other, you get these others out of the way. I'm just like that. Okay. Yeah, you don't have these in the way. You little tip for dock shooting right there. Yeah, at the yeah, end. yeah. yeah. I, I would yeah. never thought that would have been really good for, but I can see why. Yeah, good oh, exactly. Yes, yes. And uh, especially, uh, you know, when I'm out on the lake, I don't cast anymore. I actually just shoot it because when the wind's blowing and you're trying to throw a 16th ounce lure to a target, you got to shoot it. The wind is going to catch your line. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the lower you have the line to the water, the less wind's going to mess with your line and it goes straight to the target. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm not shooting a dock, I'm just out in the middle of the lake yeah. throwing at a brush pile or something. I'll just shoot it. Do you shoot it? Do you do you uh, shoot it with a cork too as well? You can, you but it'll tumble a little bit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It'll tumble. Yeah, I do that too. Also, but the cork's going to kind of go. Yeah. The cork catches the wind. See, mm -hmm. but you can you can do it either way. Mm -hmm. What else you got colors? there? Oh. Well, the uh, it comes in five different colors. Uh, we've got it in orange, chartreuse, white, pink. Uh, a lime color and also uh, non-painted. Hmm. So guys non can dip yeah, their own. They can make their own color. Guys can make their own. You know that a lot of guys do a lot of jig heads, and so this this uh, lure is available in sixteenth. The sausage head is in a sixteenth and an eighth ounce, and they can custom paint their own. Now heads. Who carries all them? Because I don't see them at the local Walmart. At home. <clears throat> the uh, WalMarts don't carry the sausage heads by themselves. But, you know, you take Grizzly Jigs up there Grizzly's in Missouri. Got Grizzly's got them. Um, Academy Sports has them. Um, That's where I've seen them was Academy. Before. Yeah, Academy Sports has the Sausage Heads in the six-packs. And um, Do they have the unpainted ones, too, up there, Academy? I don't know. It, it, I, I really don't. I, they carry a few colors, though. I do know that. Again, it's to where yeah. they can't carry the full mech yeah. of whatever. Yeah. Grizzly have everything. But you can go on their website and they got it all. Yeah. Can't go wrong. If y'all looking for Grizzly, it's 800-305-9866. <laughs> I mean, you know, I send people there every day, you know, that's looking for my products. Because Grizzly Jigs really promotes our industry. They do. They they, do. They, They've got really everything job. for everybody. Yeah. Oh, you We're know, called and that's all. It, I it's a crappie store, man. You know, uh, number one independent dealer in the United States for crappie fishing. Yeah, I'm, fine. I'm looking for certain corks <laughs> and I'm, 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 they're the only ones that have it for me in bulk. So, they yeah. got everything. Well, you can come to me now because we got beds. And that's stuff. right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know, beds is in the float business so we have a lot, we have all kinds of floats. But, uh, Anyway, another another item that I'm excited about uh, being with Strike King and and uh, for nine going on nine years now, and I design all the all the plastics for what I what I like about it. Strike King is so cool. They're like, "Hey, Waldo, we need another. We need to get that old crazy mind of yours <laughs> thinking about. You know, we got to come up with something next year. You know, and and you you got to design stuff without." copying somebody else i hate that i hate right. copying somebody else's lure i'm not going to do that i'm not going to step on anybody else's toes and so this year i know there ain't nobody out there with this but this right here is called the snapjack and if you can see right here it has twin tails uh you may not can see it on the camera but the the tails are heavier see they don't stand out mm -hmm. right. they drop down because all the weight is on the end of the tail and they're wedged and so when you cast this bait and you're reeling it in the tails actually split apart like that huh. 
they get wide. And of course, I put balls on everything. I got balls on the joker. I got balls on the shad pole. And so I put these little balls on top on each side of the tail on the end because it keeps the lure from sticking. It keeps the oh. lures, the tails from sticking together. I got you. Like when you're jigging it or whatever. And <clears throat> on Truman Lake at the Classic this year at Crappie Masters, I was using this bait right here in a black and chartreuse. And when you jig it in the water, it's just going everywhere because that weight transfers that paddle motion yeah. and yeah. one leg's going this way and the other one's going this way in the mm, water. Disco. <laughs> yeah, disco. Doing the disco. Doing the disco duck, man, you know. So, but uh, anyway, this uh, this bait right here is called the Snapjack. Snapjack. Yeah, the Snapjack. And, and uh, when you ca- – you ca- it's so versatile, you can cast it troll it jig it fish it under a cork you can do a lot of action with this right here just pulling through the water column and of course when you're pulling it the legs are it ain't real radical but it's got a little little twitch to it it's got a little twitch and each tail is beveled to the inside and so when you pull it through the water column it makes the legs go it splits like that if you can see right there yeah A lot of, a lot of uh, research on that kind of stuff. I bet Man. y'all put a lot of baits through the tank looking at them, don't y'all? I spend a lot of time at a swimming pool. <laughs> yeah. So you can actually, once you make the initial bait, and then you go test it, then you tweak it. Right. You know, you um, the way the baits start out is I draw it. I'm just sitting there, you know, and Strike Kings hit me up. Hey, we need this, we need that, you know. Uh, think of something good think of something crazy you know and uh this bait right here is the real mccoy because my partner was like give me one of those at the classic he goes, <laughs> <laughs> we were fishing some standing timber in about 14 foot of water and and i was just whacking them on it and they were hitting it on the fall because when you jerk this bait up the tails have got that weight on it and they're kind of going like this as it's going mm-hmm. down mm-hmm. And I was fishing it on an eighth ounce sausage head like this right here. And the way you put the bait on there is you just line it up to where the tails are just straight on with the hook. Mm-hmm. And you just weed it on there. You know, a lot of folks, you know, they they want to learn how to rig each bait. You know, there's different oh, yeah. baits you rig different ways, you know. And uh, like my grandma, she used to just take a rubber worm and hook it in the middle. <laughs> I mean, it was like wacky worm right, before yeah. wacky worm was it, and she was fishing on cane pole, mm. catching bass with that in a cork. She'd take that, <laughs> hook that rubber worm in the middle, and throw that cork out there on that cane pole, and she'd just jerk it, and then bass would grab it. My head, Texas. But anyway, when you push it up on that sausage head right there, there's no, there, you just can't pull it off of there because those uh, barbs on that sausage heads are so aggressive, and uh, as you can see. The snapjack, and uh, when you vert, I, I can't wait to get out there this spring and wade fishing with it. And when you're fishing in those mm-hmm. bushes and that mm-hmm. shallow water, big profile, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, t- it's a little over two inches, yeah, a little over two inches long. And and uh, that uh, it's really thin right here where it comes off the body, mm-hmm. and then it just gets thicker right, right out on the end, see, because that's all the weight that's transferable. I've never seen no bait like that, that's for sure. Well, snap jack. Snap jack. How many uh, colors? It's going to come in uh, 10 colors, uh, and it'll be out at Academy Sports and uh, for the first uh, six months. Then going into ICAST next year, it goes out nationwide. Uh, this year at Academy, uh, Mr. Crappie and Wally Marshall is going to have a uh, four foot by eight foot uh, fixture wow. that's going to be out in the aisle. It's going to have all the combos, rods, lures, reels, all that stuff on the uh, in 158 stores. That's awesome. So be checking out the Snapjack <laughs> at Academy. With a sausage head. <laughs> yeah. With a sausage head, yeah. Right, right. Exactly. So, um, no. Uh, um, oh, Would you the, shoot docks with that one? Have oh, you yeah. Tried? oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't, know, I don't know how well it's going to skip, but, yeah, you can shoot docks with it. Yep, it's uh, it's the 
he came out just a little bit late for the dock shooting a little bit mm -hmm. and so i hadn't had to try it but i've done a lot of casting with it and uh caught some fish on there i hadn't had time to do a television show with it because we're not going you know full everybody mm -hmm. and so they wanted to wait till next year to to do a tv show on that bait right there but um in you know 19 97 i started with bass pro shops and designed crappie rods for you know it was only b&m that was the only company out there really doing uh, slater had some rods and and then uh we started out with the wally marshall signature series um, i'm really excited about that in 2010 um, left bass pro shops and hooked up with lose uh, lynn reeves that started lose uh, brought lose from the dead and actually uh, rejuvenated that company and um, been in business for six years and then sold the company and now the company that bought Lose has bought Strike King mm -hmm. and now bought Southern Plastics and I know this is not for the everyday person to know no, you're but, fine. Interesting. but yeah. uh, but uh, this company, uh, Peak Rock Capital, out of Austin, Texas, uh, uh, these guys are really aggressive, and we're going to bring a lot of products to the market. Keep pushing. And, and uh, two years ago, they bought Lose, and and one of the rods that that I've came out with, I better be careful with that. One of the rods I came out with is the uh, Speed Shooter, and. I know it's really colorful and everything because you know crappie fishermen we love color man we're, no, yeah. we're oh, flashy yeah. some guys ain't so flashy you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah. but we all we all like loud colors you know like our baits and stuff like that is a lot of contrast in crappie fishing as far as baits and stuff but uh, this combo right here um, as I was showing you guys before the show uh, comes with the airwave guides on here. Yeah, now your theory on that is is tell us about your theory with the spinner rods versus the big eyes. Okay, the deal about having big eyes on a spinning rod is because when your line, if you watched it in slow motion and you can look at this online, go to airwaveguides.com or whatever it is, just look it up. And uh, we have it also on loose. And um, on this first guide, it's kind of cupped. It's like got a little cup right there. But if he was watching a regular rod that has big eyes all the way down, your line's coming off like this. Mm -hmm. And so it's In a still, circular motion. In a circular motion. Mm -hmm. And what that does, it causes friction. And so you lose distance. And so almost on the end of this rod right here is almost microwave guides like on bass yeah. rods. Really small guides. And starting out, this first guide here is probably like a number eight maybe or a number not quite a six but when you cast it out in slow motion the line will run past the guide now if you've got big guides it runs it way past the you don't see it with your naked eye mm -hmm. yeah it's so fast when you're casting so this one right here comes off stacks up maybe just a little bit then goes through the hole like a rat you know like his tail's <laughs> going through there really fast yeah, like yeah. he was running yeah and uh when you make that cast, I didn't mean to hit the light, but <laughs> anyway, when you make that cast, it's coming off the end of your rod like an arrow or a rifle. You know, it's just straight to uh -huh. the point, and then you don't have all this, and that right there catches wind. Yeah. And so, you know, I shoot a lot of docks. I mean, that's, I'm, a, I'm not so much the, the troller guy, but I like feeling that thump on the end of this mm -hmm. pole, man, or just watching that line jump before you can actually feel it but uh we've got this on an im8 rod and this setup right here uh the rod has a real fast tip on it see that right there it's just really quick and so when you load it up it's like gone mm -hmm. gone and uh is that what you use to dock shoot this is a dock shoot and i designed it especially for mm -hmm. dock shooting or people that like to fish behind uh, the dams and the causeways behind, you know, and trying to get out right. long yeah. distance mm -hmm. because we make that in a five foot six through seven foot. And I'm a seven foot guy. I mean, I just love six, six, seven foot. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people say, man, why don't you use a short rod when you're dock shooting? Because a lot of times, 
those fish are uh, right out there on the front of the dock or they're way back in the dock and I don't have to get that close because that seven footer will actually Push it shoot, it, shoot, shoot it, it, it right there. And then when you get a fish on, this is the key, because when you have docks, like I'm looking out here at your dock right here, and uh, I can see it right out there. <coughs> it's got poles going down in the water. All right. Mm-hmm. Instead of getting that crappie wrapped around one of them poles, which has happened a lot of times. With a short rod, you're doing this. You mm-hmm. know, you're, you're letting the fish kind of do his thing. With a seven foot rod, you can move him in that water column a lot better, and you're more under control. Great point, right with there. With that seven foot, with that seven, seven footer, seven yeah, foot. seven footer, man. I, I just, it's just something about it because I started out actually. Let's see, this rod right here, the signature series. These seven footers a little bit long. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the new uh, graphics on the seven footer for 2019, or the seven footer. The Water Marshall Signature Series. We make this in seven foot through sixteen foot in length. But um, this rod here, I had when I was at Bass Pro Shops, and a seven foot rod there uh, with same action, everything, and it just has a real limber. It's not, it's not ultra light, but it's mm-hmm. light action, and so you can actually cast into the brush with this, and actually just pull like. You fish a lot of docks that have people like to put brush underneath yeah. there and stuff like that, and you lose a lot of hooks with a stiff rod. With a more limber rod, you can pull those jigs across those limbs, and it'll fall off the edge of those structures, and them crappie are just sitting there ready just to whack it. <laughs> and uh, I've got a couple of TV shows coming on this year on the Outdoor Channel uh, showing this rod and the speed shooter. So be checking that out on the Outdoor Channel. Mm-hmm. On the last couple of weekends of January uh, this year, we're going to run them back to back because it has to do with the industry and where we got placement and all that kind of stuff. But this is the new graphics, uh, this uh, beautiful orange. When you get this out, it's kind of an iridescent orange. So when you get it out in the sunlight, it's really beautiful. But I just like the, uh, the action of this rod. And uh, I just got through doing a show, and I was catching them on that slab of licious right there. But I don't know if you can see that right there in the mm-hmm. camera, but that rod right there is just, it's kind of, you know, it's got a lot of bend to it, but then it loads up it right loads there, up see, you know. Mm-hmm. So. How but, far do you actually, can you hit a jig? Let's say 50 feet, 60 feet? 67 feet with the speed 67. shooter. 67 feet? 67 feet with a 16th ounce of the speed shooter. How big a target? No, I'm talking about just dead out. Just dead out. I can put it right on it. Can you? I can put it right on You put a trash can at 67 feet, I'm going to hit it. Because I, when you aim the rod, the mm-hmm. key to hitting your target is to aim your rod at the target, keep your line parallel with the water, and let her rip. Now, if you're in wide open water and the wind right. ain't blowing... You don't have to get really get down on it. You can just shoot it out there. Yeah. Because the wind ain't going to blow it either way. And so I'm like, the wind's blowing. I keep it low to the water, and especially under docks. The key is to get it back in there into right. the darkest darkest corner, darkest spot. I mean, I'm shooting cracks like you give them people over in Alabama. They really don't like you fishing their docks, so they put up all kinds of hog wire mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. horse panel, cattle panel. And I'll never forget one year on, uh, uh, what's the name of that lake up here? I'm kind of blank. I'm getting old, but uh, it's up here on the Coosa River, cha- not a Coosa River, it's Al- yeah, Coosa River chain, uh, Neely Henry. Mm-hmm. I was at Neely Henry and me and my partner, Jeff Hyman. And, and uh, for some reason I had a, um, oil leak on my motor and I blew a, a head on it and so we used to use a trolling motor and we called and told the people at the tournament that hey we're down and uh, come get us at this time you know mm-hmm. <laughs> this is, because we're going to be right here in this stretch of docks because we're going to shoot these docks and I'll never forget this one dock man it was just covered up with cobwebs and you could tell nobody's ever been but they had that cattle panel the four by four squares all the way around their dock and i was shooting through the panel and i only went down in the water about a foot i'd shoot through the panel catch the fish 
and stick the dip net underneath the panel and get the fish and give it slack <laughs> wow and then pull your hook back through it then shoot it again <laughs> and so and uh we actually come in sixth in the tournament and uh, we couldn't awesome. get, we couldn't get back to the river where we were catching some bigger fish. Now I know you shoot docks a lot, but what does one have to do to to the beginner to shoot docks? What, what how can you do it at home? What's the what do you what you need to do is just like we're sitting right here. You know, uh, you can do it uh, out in your front yard, backyard, driveway, garage. You know, and get you a sixteenth ounce, uh, just really a bass sinker weight. You know, it's got a little swivel on mm-hmm. it, and just get you a little nothing with a hook on it and set you up a little saw horse you know just you know something that little frame to it not your wife's car yeah be trying to <laughs> right. shoot it under her car <laughs> you know, she have all these dents in it but but anyway uh just shoot underneath those learn how to sit down and pull back on it and what you do is you just barely let your when you flip the bell like this right here i'm gonna show you when you flip the bell, you're in control right here, and you just barely let that line right on your finger. Do not grip it up against the foam. Just let it ride on your finger. See, before um, hmm. these spinning reels today, a long time ago, there was just a hook there. And so they had to use their finger to stop the line. If you ever want to just stop the line, let me hold this correctly you just drop your finger and you're in control you hmm. just drop your finger on top of the bell if you want to stop it you see it going you know up in somebody's boat or going up in a tree you can just drop your finger down on the top of the spool and it stops the line but what you always do is you flip the bell with your free hand and you close it with your free hand hmm. never use the handle to close the bell right because you throw a loop in your line and so I'm letting it ride right here on my finger. Then when I grab the lure, I don't know if I can, I got it right here. Here we go. And so thumb and index finger on the jig head. And when you load it up, see, and you mm-hmm. want to hold the line parallel to the water. And wherever you're pointing it, that's where it's going to go. It's not going to go anywhere else. And if you got the... Uh, right lure on there shooting the docks uh, that will skip real good it's kind of like skipping a rock yeah but uh, at your house <clears throat> the question you ask what you want to try to do is go underneath um, that saw horse as far as you can without it touching the ground mm-hmm. that's what's that's just sit there and just persistent <clears throat> I had a buddy from West Texas he was paranoid because he always liked to dip with a long pole and he was just paranoid of shooting docks and so i took him to cedar creek lake in texas and which is dock king city to go to to shoot docks and he shot it up there and it went up on the ladies dock or whoever on the dock and it hung a mop and it was stuck in the mop and so he gets out and he gets up there and he gets his hook out from that mop and he gets back in the boat, and he's shooting it again, and he hit the same mark. <laughs> and so he was like, his name's Tony Scott. And, uh, man, Tony was a legend in West Texas, uh, fishing small lakes. And, and he, they didn't do a lot of dock shooting and stuff like that because there was no docks. That's probably the biggest fish you caught off shooting docks. Mm, two and a half pounds, maybe. Oh, that's a two, fight. Two, two and a half pounds on a dock. That is, that is a fight. The, those are just... Uh, the the deal about shooting dots, you got to have your drag set. Oh yeah, you, know, you, you you know, and and another thing, folks, about spinning reels, I, I know a lot of people say, man, I can't use one of them egg beaters; they're hard to use. Da da da. da. <laughs> well, I just showed you how to use them. Yeah. You know, you're in control with your index finger, all the time, and and never close the bell with the handle. Always close it with your free hand. Once you get to your target, then close it. Then you can turn it. So. But um, um, any spinner reels better than others as far as dock shooting? You are all about the same. I use not, a seventy-five good. sides, the, the WMS seventy-five. Uh, it's not too big, not too small. Mm-hmm. It's got enough volume of uh, line there to where 
you can hang up and break off many times before you have to re-spool the whole reel. Uh-huh. And it's kind of a medium size reel, 75, WMS 75, Wally Marshall, six ball bearing. You need one that's pretty smooth. Uh-huh. I don't like one that's got slack in it. If it doesn't yeah. have a clutch in it, no, it's not good, you know. Um, but uh, there's a lot of reels out there on the market that have clutches and where you don't have that mm-hmm. slack when you mm-hmm. set the hook, you know, and that slapping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. What about line size? you prefer to line weight over the other? or Six pound, uh, pretty much all the time, especially when you have a lot of uh, posts, mm-hmm. stuff like that, like my six pound, Mr. Crappie line breaks it. Eight and a half pounds, tensile strength, that's straight up eight and a half pounds off the floor. Um... I like the six pound. Now I have found when I'm shooting docks that I have to size down to a 32nd because the fish get a little finicky. Your bait's falling a little bit too fast and the water column. And so you put a 32nd on there to where it's staying in the slower fall, where it's staying in the strike zone longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you got any other uh, products you want to tell about real quick? Well, get the uh, products out of the way. Um, if people like cork, hand me that right there. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> and we got what you drink here. There it goes. And so, um, you know, a lot of people don't like to use foam handle rods. They like the cork, the sensitivity, uh, the IM8 Wally Marshall Pro Series rods. Um, this is a seven footer also, and I have a 100 size reel on here, a little bit bigger. Um, these rods right here on, if you'll notice on all my rods, I have small guides. I don't use, you know, the big guides anymore because it's proven fact that when you get it going straight off the end, we yeah. just talked about that, but this is, I am eight also the cork handle. Uh, this is one of my new rods also. It's been out about two years on the pro series and we make the pro series in cork from seven foot up to 12 foot in length. So. A lot of guys like to hold a 12 footer in their hand. Mm-hmm. I don't. Mm-hmm. I'm, for my vertical jigging rods, I like to use the Pro Series 9 footer or 10 footer. So it's not necessarily the uh, uh, spinning rod all the time, but you know, casting and catching crappie, probably 90% of people, that's what they do. It's because one, they're landlocked, mm-hmm. they're fishing off of a dock, mm-hmm. and so there's a lot of casting involved. Uh, the guys that are fortunate enough to have boats, of course, we're into trolling, and we have rods from uh, eight foot to sixteen foot in length in the Wally Marsh Signature Series. I thought I brought one of those in here. I think I did right here. <clears throat> Let me see if this is the right rod. Then no, this is not sixteen foot, but it's a. <coughs> Excuse me. This little eight footer right here. And just like the seven footer I was just showing you, uh, we go from 18 foot to the sweet 16s. And this rod right here is tough as nails. I've been making this same rod since 1997. Mm-hmm. And uh, for you guys that like the long line uh, with a little bit lighter action rod, I just seen it leaning up here, uh, is the uh, speed sticks. I know uh, just like the speed shooters, it's in the same lineup. And we actually make this from 8 foot to 14 foot in length. And the 14 footer is a two piece. Mm-hmm. So you're not having a three piece rod where you're having yeah. rods going everywhere. Yeah. But uh, the sweet 16s are really good for tight line trolling, pulling crankbaits. You go to the speed shooters. The guys do some tight line with them. And uh, also the long lining. But... Uh, I like to pull them crankbaits too every now and then. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, that you know when it gets right, and so I stick to the signature series or my troll tech series, and you can see all of this on uh, MrCrappie.com or Lose.com. Uh, you can check out the rods there and uh, cover a little we, bit of we, everything. We, you do. We, we, we've got everything from the weekend angler uh, in the Mr. Crappie series. Um, then we have. The uh, Wally Mar- or the Mr. Crappie custom trollers that are uh, a lot of guys like that lighter tip on these old big fish. They like a little bit lighter tip on their rods, uh, and we make that up to 16 foot in length, also uh, from 8 foot to 16 foot. And 
I guess got, Grizzly Jig would be the place to really look well, for all they, those poles. They carry or? everything I got. Okay. I mean, they carry A to Z, Mr. Croppy, Wally Marshall, and uh, I gave you all the number a while ago where to get in touch with those guys. If you just now keyed in, it's uh, 1-800-305-9866, Grizzly Jigs, Carruthersville, Missouri. The mm-hmm. end of the world, brother. <laughs> <laughs> if not, you're going to run off in the Mississippi River. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pick up don't some go good crappie fish and yeah. stuff before you head out. Yeah, don't go too far, you know. But, uh, no, over the years, um, I've just been pretty fortunate to, uh, hey, man, work hard, you know. Yeah. It's uh, every day, get up. I never take my foot off the gas pedal, and and I just hit it hard every day, and that's just good. just work at it and trying to make new products for today's angler. That's you know, awesome. I, to me, when I think of crappie fishing, especially when I start out really crappie fishing, I can say that you were the guy that everybody looks up to. Uh, and really, my opinion has not changed over the years. You are the hardest working guy I know in crappie fishing. Oh, yeah. And my hat's Most on. definitely. Most You've definitely. You've helped this sport more than you can ever realize by the work that you do with the public and the manufacturing. I mean, we need guys that sitting there telling these manufacturers, hey, these crappie fishermen will want this product. They need this product. Right. So my hat's off to you on my end as far as the angler and the guide and the tournament fisher to help getting these products made for us. Right. I mean, and it's it all goes around. Man, I appreciate that, man, because, you know, I'm just one guy. You yeah. know, I'm just one guy. And uh, there's a lot of ears out there, and there's a lot of guys that, you know, um, that love just crappie fishing, man. They yeah. just eat up with it. And no, I've got two you, guys right you, here. <laughs> you, nev- you never know who you're going to run into. And we've had this conversation before, like last night at dinner. And you've got <clears throat> one second of being the hero mm-hmm. or the goat. Yeah. Yes. Like, the lady a while ago at breakfast that came up and wanted a picture, you know, an entertainer would have probably said, I ain't got time. Yeah. Or I get, right. I'm not this saying the they place, would, yeah. or this ain't the place or whatever. And, um, you just can't do that. You, no. you sit, you, because you don't know who that person is. You don't know, you know, sometimes the old saying is, it's not good to know your heroes. Well, that ain't my case. Mm-hmm. That mean, you know, I get calls all the time, uh, they're thinking they're calling uh, a manufacturer because when you go on mrcroppy.com, my phone number's there, and they think it's a number to uh, get repair or customer mm-hmm. service, yeah. and I'm answering the phone. Yeah, that's what we was talking about at breakfast. I, I don't see any other guy out there like you're doing, <clears throat> being, doing that. It's just, uh, and, and who am I speaking with? Uh, you're speaking with Wally Marshall. Oh, really? I didn't expect to get you on the phone. <laughs> uh, you know, when they tell me their problem, their issue, or they're looking for a certain product, or they're wanting to know about a certain product, and I can help them right then, you know? And if not, they can leave a message, or not leave a message. I mean, they leave the message on the comments, Yeah. and I can call them right back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so having that, uh, or they can leave a message when they call me, and I call them back later if I'm in the middle of something, but... I try to get to everybody I can. I try to get to because, you know, you got up and coming folks and young kids and you, you get all kinds of calls from different people all over the world and and um it's amazing the amount of crappie fishermen that are out there today. It's 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 astronomical. Oh yeah. I, I I don't think the really the uh fishing industry really realizes yet how many people crappie fish. Well, I know that the manufacturers realize it because they can see what's coming in and what's being sold, and and they have a pretty good. They got idea. the numbers for sure. They got yeah, they got the content of, of of what's happening out there in the marketplace, but they really don't dig into it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This is some extra gravy on the side. We're making bass lures, and we make crappie lures, mm-hmm. or we do bass rods, and we're doing crappie rods, and this, that, and the other. But uh, I guarantee it, in the, just like this show right here, this is going to wake people up to actually see what's going on deep down, you know, yeah. because the everyday Joe don't get the, they don't get the gravy. They don't get to hear like some of the things I've talked about right. this morning. Right, and that's what's what we going, want to bring for sure. Yeah, what's going on in the industry and 
stuff like that because I'll tell you what, man, uh, uh, there's more upside to crappie fishing than there is bass side because bass has gotten to a point now it's cost millions of dollars to do it. Mm-hmm. And if I remember right, the first tournament I ever fished, I owned a pair of waders. I had a brown sack <laughs> with some bits, crinkle head, jig heads in it. And I was using some twiddle tail, lucky strike, blue and white tubes. I couldn't even change color. <laughs> and I stuck them <laughs> in my waders right. and I had a stringer and a fly rod and a popsicle for a reel what a kind popsicle, of popsicle popsicle stick a popsicle stick yeah you take a popsicle stick yeah. and you cut a wedge on it and you put it in the reel seat mm-hmm. and you just wrap your line around it That's so crazy. if and i use 10 pound test so if i got a big fish on there i couldn't give him nothing you know he's gonna break my line or oh i was gonna goodness. go with him or wherever <laughs> you know, i could only walk out too far you know and what was cool was you know, uh, learning to wade fish and all that kind of stuff. And we get into that later. But, you know, today's crappie angler, there's a lot of information on YouTube and, and Google, YouTube. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's you tons see, of info out there. There's a tons of info, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, it's not all uh, major production. You no. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's done with a cell phone and this, yeah. that, and the other. Yeah. And there's so many people out there doing it, you know, and just showing and just open people's eyes to. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, we're going to talk about it later. Is talking about the expo we're going to put on next year. Mm-hmm. All I want them to do is take a bite of crappie. Mm-hmm. If, right. you don't, if you don't crappie fish and you come to the expo next year, take a just bite. take a bite of crappie, and I guarantee it, you'll be ruined from then on. Yeah. I mean, you'll be fishing for mm-hmm. crappie for the rest of your life, even if you don't do it. Um, before we take a quick break, is there anything else you want to showcase real quick? Well, over the last uh, five years, I've been with Buck Nines. <clears throat> and uh, this last year, we started this. We make a commemorative uh, knife, exclusive knife, Mr. Crappie. Uh, the first year, we did a moose-style pocket knife. And this year we did a uh, what they call a sow belly trapper, <laughs> and uh, the uh, it comes in a nice little box here, and it's got a magnetic lid. And so if you're looking for something for Christmas or how much whatever, does that retail for? Um, what do you think? What would you think a knife like this would I'd go like for? Hundred bucks. Hundred. Hundred bucks. I would say like. Thirty nine ninety five. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, you took cheap. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. I'll tell you what. Uh, I don't know if I can get three easy three easy payments in 1995. Three easy payments, huh? I don't know. Let me see if I can get mine out of my pocket. I don't want to take that out of the case. Where, my, where can they find that knife? Uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works Smoky or MrCroppy.com on store.mrcroppy.com. Mm-hmm. So, actually, Good the pocket knife, there's, there's not a crappie knife on the market. And that little knife right there being a sow belly trapper, which a trapper blade is two blades on one side. And uh, my name's uh, engraved on it. And uh, something that I say on the TV shows a lot of time is Kapowie. Kapowie. I go, Kapowie. <laughs> you, know, I mean, you know, and so it's engraved on the uh, fleshing blade on there. And uh, that fleshing blade actually come off of a knife that was uh, a German-made knife. And uh, it's really cool looking and you can, I see uh, it's numbered too. Oh yeah, they're serialized. There's there's only fifteen hundred of them made. Well, that's nine ninety three. So <laughs> no, that's number nine ninety three. Yeah, that's nine ninety three. Right. So here. how much? How much is it? Twenty nine ninety five. Hey, and it did comes I get that out of the dot? Hey, no, you missed hey, it. Thirty nine. You said thirty nine. Like, <laughs> oh, did I? Oh, <laughs> you oh man. But uh, makes great Christmas presents, and if folks want me to autograph them and for a certain, oh really? But, you know, all they have to do is call me, and I turned in an order today for da 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 da. da. Could you please autograph it? And I I done a bunch Man, of that. Man, you're stuff. hands on. That's awesome. Well, it's just uh, I think a knife like that with a uh, I actually designed the crappie. Uh, this is on all of my t-shirts and stuff. That crappie, and so we just took that. That's it right mm-hmm. there. And uh, but uh, having that double blade and it's uh, serrated on that first uh, blade right there. And I've actually been cutting hay strings with that for my 
wife's cattle. So <laughs> both on <laughs> purpose. Yeah, I was just using one of my collectors, and uh, but uh, anyway, um, the uh, knife itself is uh, a beautiful knife, and you like I said, you can get last year's model or you can get this year's model. That's great because man. I kept a few kind of back stashed back yeah. from last year. And uh, this blade right here is really cool. Right. So. We're going to take a quick break, uh, hear from our sponsors, and we'll be right with you. Hey, welcome back. Wally Marshall here, Mr. Crappie. I'm right here on the banks of... Uh, Lake Washington down here in Mississippi with the Crappie Connection. We're talking about Mr. Brad Chapel and Justin Berry from up there in the Show Me State in Missouri. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Hey, uh, shout out to Crappie Crazy, one of our sponsors, and the Direction TV and Mark Stowe. Give a shout out to them on Facebook. Check them out. Great things coming on there. Uh, let's get jumped in on some a uh, couple questions that uh, we start off here real quick. A uh, lot, a lot of dock shooting. Uh, Brad, you want to interpret yeah, what they asked? Uh, pretty basic what kind of docks you look for what time of seasons kind of really tell us your opinion on, on when you need to really start trying to dig in and dock shoot here's the key guys from the end of april basically you can start a little bit before that depending on water temperatures and shade is the number one structure of all game fish mm -hmm. The darker the dock, I'm talking about less light underneath the dock will probably produce more fish. And this is the way I do it. Let's hear it. I'm at home and I'm looking at my computer and I'm going to a strange lake I've never been on, but I know there's docks there. I will look at Google Map and I'll see where the docks are and where they're positioned on the lake. Mm -hmm. Then I take a map, a hard map, and I'll look to see where the creek channel's running close to the shore. If you can find a dock that the creek that it's setting out over the creek channel, mm -hmm. dude, you talking about sweet Georgia Brown. That right <laughs> there is like, that's the mecca of all because it can fish can move in and out of that dock because a lot of times when they're on a creek channel like that, you got a lot of contour there mm -hmm. uh, of coming out of 15 foot of water up to like three foot of water in the back of the dock or even deeper sometimes or the whole dock setting in 16 foot of water. Uh, that's a year round dock. But what I look for, especially one time I was taking some outdoor riders at Kentucky Lake and I'd never been on Kentucky Lake and I kind of looked at it, but I didn't know that much about it. And I asked this outdoor rider I, that I was taking out fishing. I said, I ain't never been on a lake. I said, he, he goes, well, I bass fish all the time. And I said, well, show me where some docks are. And he pulled in this, we pulled in this one cove. And I said, all the crappie are under that dock right over there. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm looking at my map. I'm looking at my map on my depth finders. And I see where the creek channel's running. And the creek channel run right on the dock. Hmm. And we go over to that dock. And I flip under there, and I pull out a sack of crappie that was like seven might have weighed 13 pounds. Wow. It was That's slacks. a good dog. And this, and, this, dog. And, and this outdoor rider was going, Ron Wong. Yeah. Everybody knows Ron. Oh, oh, Ron, Ron, Ron was with you? Yeah, Ron. Ron <laughs> Wong. He was the guy. And he's like, I can't believe this. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, is it like this all the time? And I go, no, man. He said, do you think I can do it? After I done pulled out about 15 slabs. And so I showed him how to do it. And he was flipping under there. And uh, just do your homework before you go to the lake. Look on Google Earth. Look where the docks are. Pull out your hard map. Check it out. And we whacked them fish. And he had never seen that before in his life. He had never witnessed anybody shooting docks. And so he was, what do you call it, amorized. Mm -hmm. He was like, wow, you know, and yeah. the wow factor's in, and he's getting all these crazy shots of these monster fish, you know. Matter of fact, remind me to look him up. I need to get mm -hmm. some of them photos of them fish. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but the key is, you know, shade. Uh, early in the year, 
you can start fishing some of the docks back in the coves but as it goes into summertime mode and they're pulling mm-hmm. back out <coughs> off of the spawn you can go out on main lake points or right inside some of the coves where they start stacking up in the mouths of coves and they'll get under the docks there now within black crappie you talk about in the sp- uh, springtime up there in the shallow coves within black crappie stay up there you think they'll stay up there a long time they'll stay up there they stay up there all year you think i have caught uh did a show one time with jimmy houston on a lake that was about 2300 acres and uh it was 103 in the shade wow mm. and the they water temperature water temperature was 91 wow and we were catching crappie in a foot of water shooting docks that goes to tell you that they don't don't matter how hot it is because that's where the best oxygen was yeah. yes see like a lot of people saying that summertime here on lake washington gets tough they're shallow mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's my thought mm-hmm. yeah you know but it's clear and so you really got to play that you know you may have to cork them you may have to do something a little bit different <coughs> to where you're actually casting to them yeah instead yeah. of using a single pole i remember watching you shoot docks at grand lake in oklahoma you remember Ooh. you remember that dock right there i'm talking about i'll never forget it brother. <laughs> hey, i remember hey, it this is this is a story about grand lake we was doing an outdoor riders event there too and uh so i never been on grand lake and so i asked the people that were guides on the lake i said what do y'all do for crappie here and they go well we have a lot of brush piles on these points and just go fish the points so that morning i fished the points for about three hours and I said, to heck with this, because I was catching a little old white crappie about 10, 11 inches long. And so I went over there to a dock that, that looked like ought to have some fish on it. Mm-hmm. I caught a fish every shot mm. for about. I, I watched him. And so I called Lynn Reeves with, with uh, Lou's, and I said, you have the best outdoor rider with me in the morning. And so I got John Neparandi. Mm. And uh, we go out. And John's taking pictures and just doing his deal. And I was catching a fish every every shot, every shot. Every How big shot. a crappie was there? Man, up to two pounds, dude. up to two pounds. I mean, these were just studs. And, and it was in the fall. It was in October. And they were just right under the surface. And that line would jump, man. You could just see it just bam, bam. Finally, I told John, I said, put that camera down, man. We need to catch some fish. And he started fishing. And we sat there and just put the spank down on them. And so we have to change outdoor riders every two hours. Oh, really? And so, yeah, you go take another outdoor rider, and that's the way those deals are set up to where you got 12 outdoor riders, you got 12 anglers. Well, to get everybody in, you have to swap every so often. And so I had these stringers in the boat, and I said, John, let's string them up. And we got these two big old chain stringers, and you could just barely lift them. We had 30 crappie. And <clears throat> we get up there to the dock, and everybody's up there taking pictures of these little 11 inch mm-hmm. fish. <laughs> you roll up in there deep, so, don't yeah, you? And so, Woo! and so we pulled up in there, and, <clears throat> and John goes, Man, I kind of feel bad about doing this. And I said, No, man, don't feel bad about it. It's your moment, and man. So, shot. <laughs> and so he grabbed his stringer, I grabbed my stringer, and we're walking down the dockway, and everybody's just kind of turning their heads. They're just like, uh, speechless. Yeah. I <laughs> those other guides, those other guys that got there, they were like speechless and they was going, where, you know, and so lunchtime came around and everybody's going, man, where are you catching them fish? I said, out there on them points, on them brush piles where y'all told me they was biting. That's where I went, you know, and I never would tell them. Then that night, man, they cornered me up. They said, "Where are you catching these monster black crappie?" I said, "You ever shot any docks?" He said, "What's that?" Oh my goodness, are you serious? I said, That's first time I've seen." It. I said, "You've been cheating your customers, man. The fun of a lifetime of shooting docks. Now, how deep was them docks? Anywhere from ten foot in the front of them to fourteen foot in the front of them. And mm-hmm. and but they were just they were." they're suspended fish what you're doing when you're dock fishing you're catching suspended fish right a lot of times because when the water starts cooling down the fish get high in the water column so they're suspended right Mm -hmm. 
And so the way I shoot a dock is when I shoot it in there the first time and I let it go all the way to the bottom and I don't get a bite, I'll shoot it back in there again and I'll reel it just a little bit faster. Then I'll shoot it in there again and reel it a little bit faster. Right. And so you find that depth of where there, you start getting bites. That speed. You can't yep. see them with the naked eye, but when you catch one, there's others chasing it. Mm-hmm. And so what you do is you draw the school out to you, basically. Oh, really? A little bit. And so you can actually just not cast as far and start getting bites out closer to the boat. And But it's being persistent. <laughs> Have you ever used a lot of corks when you shoot docks? Corks? Mm-hmm can't get them out of there very rarely because if you can get a cork under a dock it would have to be this high up off the water mm -hmm. yeah you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. you, you just really couldn't get it i got you back in there where it needs to be but if you need for it to fall slower use a lighter jig you know um 30 second or even smaller you know if you just want it to just barely fall you know yeah it just slow fall but uh man that night they cornered me up and I told them how I was catching them and then other guys that from other guides me. started doing it. Me. And, and you Brad, started doing it? Yeah. Did you really? And, yeah. and it was ugly, wasn't it? Yeah. It was ugly. It, it, uh, ugly, you, ugly being good. Yeah. And Did I, you accomplish it? Yeah. And so really? it was unreal. Here here was here was um on this one dock. I remember the dock he's talking about. I think I could still find that the dock. The jet skis where you pull the jet skis up. <laughs> Because the way they had their dock, it was all blocked off. And it came out and it had this. But they had these two jet skis floats where you just pull the jet skis up on top of them and dock them. Right. <coughs> well, it had a gap in between them that was about this wide. Well, you're daily on it, ain't you? And you shoot it in that gap and it was open in the back, but it was really dark under there. I mean, no sunlight. And what it'd do, it shot it in there, then it'd fall down through that crack bam bam and so what i'd do is i'd pull up a little bit and let john shoot it then i'd pull back and i'd shoot it then pull up and let john shoot it and that's so awesome we just and several other guides we went out with uh we was just hammering them you know and a lot of the guys weren't set up with the spinning rods and stuff or the seven foot like i said i like to use that seven footer man and uh that's what i was using was my signature series then um uh, it is just that was five fun. years ago this past was October it, was it five years it five yeah. well well all I know is if you want to go to lakes that have a lot of good dock shooting you know of course Wise Lake in Alabama you go to Cedar Creek Lake in Texas uh, even Lake Fork you know any lake that has docks mm -hmm. there's crappie yeah because again folks out there watching shade 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 is the key yeah and just like here uh brad if you had a boat slip out there mm -hmm. what we used to do at the marinas is we'd take a tarp and we would stretch the tarp over the boat slip make it darker and we would rent the boat slips to have us a place to wintertime crappie fish huh really and so we would put brush in <clears throat> around the edges a little bit of brush not a ton and then put the tarp over the boat slip with bungee cords and leave a gap around the sides. <laughs> That's a great we idea. We crappie like no tomorrow. And see, <laughs> you don't even have to own a boat. Yeah. Just rent you a boat slip for two or three months. Mm -hmm. And you can catch all the crappie you want on these boat slips on these lakes. I'll be darn. Probably at a discount rate even. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's just, hey, wintertime rate, you know, it might be a little cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but you're you on honey hole. If, you know, in, in, in crappie fishing, as everybody knows, pretty much, if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, from a brush pile to a shade. Shade, shade, build the shade. That's what br brush piles produce is yeah. shade because the sun's coming in at one angle and the shade's on this side of the brush pile. Sun's over here, the shade's over here. And if you're fishing standing timber, always fish on the shady side. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. that's true. I so, guess my last question about dock shooting for right now is, is there a particular color that you always start out with? Especially, we're talking about dark, shady area. Do you want to 
particular color that you want to start out with to try them? It, it has to do with the stain of the water, you mm-hmm. know, the clarity of the water. But I always start out with refrigerated white. It's white and chartreuse. White and chartreuse works on every lake in the United States, no matter what. Mm-hmm. But if you start getting a little bit darker, murkier water, I'll go to some kind of orange. Oh, you go to like a Cajun cricket color or something mm-hmm. like that. Right. Or I may go to a June bug, something that's a little bit darker. Darker the water, darker the bait. Right. You know, lighter the water, lighter the bait. Right. And so, um, <clears throat> but being clear or not, you're not spooking the fish. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But <clears throat> just getting it back in there. I'll never forget I was doing a TV show with Jimmy Houston on Cedar Creek Lake. Jimmy, I got to tell this one on you, and I'm still mad at you about it. <laughs> <laughs> Full warning. <laughs> no, I'm not mad at him. But uh, we were doing a TV show on Cedar Creek Lake, and we was fishing these one set of docks. It was actually a like a marina. So there were several docks, oh, yeah. the, you know, just connected yeah. docks. And uh, <clears throat> we were throwing a Marabou Roadrunner because Roadrunner's our sponsor, right? And we're doing the Roadrunner show. And we was using a redhead, black, white. That's what I was using. And Jimmy was using um, another color or whatever. And uh, <clears throat> so we was just hammering them. And he was sitting actually in the driver's seat. And I was up on the front of the boat and flicking on there, and I swung a fish around to Jimmy to take my fish off. He goes, I ain't taking your darn fish. <laughs> he goes, oh, oh, oh. He goes, hey, man. I said, dude, I'll take your fish off. Why ain't you taking my fish off? Right. He goes, I ain't going to do it. He just flat rejected, I'm not taking your fish off because I was kind of smoking him. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, he could catch them too, but uh, just having a lot of fun, man. Uh, uh, if you want to take a kid fishing, you know, crappie fishing is a family sport. Yeah. You know, uh, from 8 to 80, man. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like everybody can do it. Grandma, grandpa, uh, top deal. And, uh, guys, I'm telling you, dock shooting is the, uh, if you can uh, find the lakes that have the docks. And mm-hmm. I've actually had people call me and say, well, I can't fish your classic because there's no docks on the lake. Really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I mean, there are some, but not a ton. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, but anyway, guys, hey, man, it's been good. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, we're going to – you got anything else you want to add real quick before we close the first part out? Man, I, gonna... I just want to thank you guys for starting this, you know, the Crappie Connection. Man, I think it's a great name. I think you're on the right track um, because a lot of information can be – you know, people out yeah. there that want to learn how to crappie fish or get into the market or, or, you know, just get started for the first time and have never fished. Yeah. yeah. And to get excited about it because, you know, when I... It's fun. Flat out. Hey, man. When I, when I was first started, it was just crazy. You just... You couldn't even sleep at night, you know, yeah. thinking about the I next I can't day. even sleep. I, I'm 33 years old, and I still can't sleep about it until the next, you know, oh, not going, know I'm going the next day. Oh, dude, I was just getting started, man. <laughs> you know, right when you're 33, that's when I started, yeah. you know. And it's it's just such a great sport, and mm-hmm. um, like I said, everybody can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you coming for sure. Uh, we're going to close it out. We're going to have a two-part segment on you. So we got a lot of great content coming for you guys. So stay tuned. I'm Justin Barry. Brad Chapel. Mr. Crappie. That's right. We'll be back at you. Appreciate it. Holla. On the lake and a fishing pole. River here, I'll rest my soul. I can feel my worries drift away.